that's what produces estrogen is like if you go to a doctor and you need help and you trust them to give you help, your estrogen levels shoot up. And when your estrogen levels shoot up, if you're a woman, it lowers your stress level. So most of the benefit you actually get from going to a doctor, if you believe in that, is placebo. They've shown this, okay? Doctor can give you <laughs> medicine to raise your blood pressure and tell you it's gonna lower your blood pressure, it will lower your blood pressure. There's amazing studies on placebo, but I think a placebo also works best when you have belief. It's the whole idea. You believe this person's gonna help you. And for women, they will, uh, when they believe somebody can give me something I need, their estrogen levels will go up. And for women, that high estrogen will actually lower her stress. And ultimately, the source of all sickness is a chronic stress in our lives. You know, I was uh, just watching a, a talk of, oh, I can't remember his name, but he's a medical doctor and he was affirming once again, he saw all these women who get cancer. Interesting, he was primarily saying women, uh, some men in it, but primarily women he had observed. When they got cancer, you would look at their their obituaries and you would see that, oh, she was always giving, you know, even when she had cancer, she continued giving to her clients and she kept going to the hospital and helping the poor. And they're really giving, giving, giving. That's why there's the saying, the good die young. We, we say, oh, people who give a lot are so good, but they're also at the highest risk of cancer because particularly for women, when they're not secure in their female side, the way they deal with that insecurity is by being over giving. Because if to be a secure in your feminine side means to you, you feel I can ask for help and get it. Hi, and welcome to Unlocked From Within. Today, we have Dr. John Gray, author of the best selling relationship book of all time Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus. US Today listed his book as one of the top 10 most influential books of the last quarter century. It was the number one best-selling book of the 90s. His books are translated in approximately 45 languages in more than 100 countries. And he has written over 20 books to date. We had John last on the show a few months back and we discussed how to increase testosterone naturally and what healthy male masculinity looks like. The power of breathwork and meditation and ice bars and natural ways to balance male and female hormones and so much more. Check out the episode if you haven't already and let's welcome John again to Unlocked From Within. Hey John, welcome to Unlocked From Within again. Hey, good to see you again. Happy to be with you. Awesome stuff. Again, John, like it's uh, it's an honor to have you on again. Uh, we've had so much uh, positive feedback from the last episode. A lot of my clients and friends and that have listened to it and said, it's exactly what's going on in my relationship right now. And so I guess we wanted to have uh, some follow-up questions from our last episode. That's great. So yeah, just going, I guess, going off from the last episode, you know, we were talking about we were more so geared towards, I guess we ended up on the, you know, healthy masculinity and the male, the male side. So I guess today's episode, I did want to sort of uh, go more into the focus of um, the women, you know, women's hor yeah, hormones. Yeah. Um, and, you know, we touched one of the key things, two of the key things from the last episode for me was, uh, you know, how you said towards the end, we, we spoke about, you know, women, maybe a decade ago or could be seven years ago or in the past, I should say, they would come home from a day's work and want to talk about their work. And you're saying what you're seeing now is women are coming home and not wanting to talk about what happened in the day, not wanting to vent uh, and are very much on their male side, male hormones, but might not be aware of that. Nicely said. Yeah, really. <laughs> that was very nicely said. It's a challenge. It used to be very easy for me to uh, talk to, you know, in shows and seminars and whatever. And I would describe that, you know, women are stressed. One of the ways that they're, they will able to dis to lower stress levels and stress levels are measurable. Okay. There's adrenaline and then there's cortisol and women's cortisol levels tend to be double to four times higher than men's as a general rule. Uh, not because of, uh, not because they're designed that way. It's that, that when women are in a workplace environment where there's 
decision making, where there's challenge, where there's bottom line, where there's sacrifice, they they make male hormones. Mel, men are designed for that. Basically, there's an actual design <laughs> where a long time ago, you know, we had a conversation and men said, look, I just need your love. <laughs> So what do you want me to do? I'll do whatever you don't want to do. So that was the, the arrangement. To a certain extent, it's still there in more traditional couples. I'm going to do whatever you don't want to do. Um, I, I'm going to do dirty jobs, dangerous jobs, difficult jobs, uh, jobs that, you know, talk to the lawyers, talk to the neighbors, you know, fix the roof, go out in danger. You know, men are happy to do that as long as somebody says, you're my hero. Okay, so that was pretty much the dynamic. And when I see couples are pretty happy in their relationships, they're still, that's still going on. There's a, a masculine side and a feminine side in all of us. And what we're seeing today is as women have gone more to their masculine side, uh, men have gone more to their feminine side. And what that looks like is more passivity, less tendency, less ambition, uh, more emotional reactions to things, pouting, uh, getting angry. Most people think anger is a, is a, like a, a masculine quality. Actually, anger is, if you measure the hormones in a man when he's angry, uh, his testosterone's going down. We, you know, we think anger, you're all testosterone. No, is that when you get angry, your testosterone's going down and your estrogen's going up. That's the female hormone that women need 10 times more estrogen, generally speaking. And to be romantic, they need 20 times more estrogen than a man. And, and Men, on the other hand, need 10 times, 10 to 20 times more testosterone to uh, fall in love with a woman, to have well-being and so forth. So we really are beautiful mirrors of each other. And when we understand that, then we can see the logic in saying to women who are stressed, look, when you come home, you need to do something that will wake up your female hormones. So this is for the women. You may not feel like you can do it. You may be embarrassed to do it. You may feel I have no time to do it. That's, you know, these are some of the symptoms of women being on their male side. They're afraid of looking weak. They're afraid of appearing needy. And yes, you can be needy. I mean, there's some, there's something called too much on your female side, okay? But the, the female side of all of us, uh, I'm a man, my female side is when I feel the need for something, that's my female side. Ironically, one of the strongest needs in men when it comes to relationship is the need for sex. And you, once again, you think, oh, a man needing sex, he's on his male side. Actually, he is on his male side, but he can't even get an erection unless his estrogen goes up. For your Damn. for to have an erection, your estrogen has to go up. You but you also have to be on your male side. Okay, you have to have testosterone. If your low testosterone is low, you can't get erections. But if your testosterone is up and you you feel like okay, I want to have sex, but you can't get it up, it's because you don't have enough estrogen. Estrogen is also necessary to have an erection that almost like both have to start rising up higher and higher, which is, you know, really interesting stuff to know. And most people, you know, we think that, oh, anger is, is testosterone men. No, uh, 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 testosterone man is cool, calm and collected. You know, these are the guys when there's an emergency, they get in a truck and they bring water to all the people, you know, <laughs> they they go out into the terrible rain, you know, they go out and do the long trips, whatever. They're happy to do it as long as somebody says, what a great job, you know, and people will say what a great job if you do what other people don't want to do. Now, suddenly women want to go out and become like men. All right, that's good because there's a reason for that. One is I think it's an evolution of consciousness uh, which is as we become more conscious as human beings, we become aware as a man, I'm aware that I also have a female side. But the trap is if I go too far to the female side, I'll have addiction. Okay, that's the big thing for men is that low energy and addiction are the, are the big, big issues and, and emotionality, you know, neediness, angry, pouting, whatever. Uh, inability to make a commitment, for example, is a sign of low testosterone. And if you're feeling hurt, ever you're feeling hurt for a man, it's way high estrogen, okay? Rarely men feel hurt uh, unless they have high estrogen. Now, there, there is a good quality to all this role reversal and that, you know, for me, when I married my wife, uh, she said, look, I've had two children with a previous marriage. I don't wanna be stuck with a man leaving me again. 
So I had to convince her to have a baby with me. All right. So this is my uh, my wife. We have a, a two stepdaughters and a and a daughter. And I got on my knees and I said, "Okay, I promise I'll never leave you, and I'll be a fifty percent husband." Okay, with the children. I mean, fifty fifty work. Uh, you're fifty percent with the children. I'm fifty percent. You can ask me anything when it comes to the parenting and so forth. So because I made my promise, I I basically didn't follow up on a lot of business opportunities. You know, I, I made a deal with her and we worked out how many days I could travel because I travel to teach when I'm back. Those days I'm teaching seminars around the world, how many days I could be away maximum, but not every month. And it was 10 days. So 10 days a month. I always wasn't at the same time, three or four days and then made three or four days. So we made a deal that worked for her, that worked for me. And I could have easily broken that and said, oh, I'm going to make so much money if I just go for a month, you know, they'll pay me this and they'll pay me. Couldn't do it because I made that promise. And she felt good about insisting on it because I made that promise. So this this is the benefit of me being on my female side is that I got to spend time with my kids. I, I'm not one of these parents that go, gee, I missed out on my kids growing up because I was busy making lots of money. So everybody's happy but me. Even though I thought I was happy, men will think they're happy, but there's a deeper level of fulfillment and happiness from the family, from the love between a man and a woman. And the, the reality is when men learn how to have both estrogen and testosterone, then your sex drive becomes amazing. You know, so many men my age, I'm 72 years old and I've got all these male friends of mine, they can't even get erections, uh, but I have high testosterone and high estrogen. You know, my wife was just so grateful to me for something I did the other day. Uh, basically i couldn't we we couldn't even get through the night without having sex three times okay it was wonderful i i just couldn't imagine that getting older would be so fantastic for me but it's because i have this knowledge of polarity i have i'm grounded in my masculine side and i respect the female side okay i respect my wife i have know the ways to give her what she needs but if my wife wasn't open to learning i couldn't give it to her for example, one of the techniques for women, you want to begin to enjoy sex again. <laughs> so many women don't even enjoy sex. You know, they mm. do it kind of like an obligation. And what man wants to have sex with a woman who's obligated to do it? You know, the whole point of it is we want to make her happy. Yes, we have a, a need for that. But really what we're needing is her happiness. The women confuse, and sometimes men confuse it as well, our strong sex drive is literally when we have sex with someone we love, then it's making love. Sex becomes making love. We're not just doing it with a stranger. That's just throwing your life force away, which is a problem today. We talked about that, all the men and porn, you're just throwing your life force away. How about giving it to your partner and you know, bringing her estrogen up higher through your desire and love and respect for her? So th these are the sort of a the, the insights that I've learned is how to provide the particular kind of support for a woman. And I could know all of that as a man, but if she's not game, you see, if she's not aware, I need this help, I need help and I need emotional support for help. Not a complaint, but a conversation. This is, you know, I'm happy with my job. I like making my money. I'm an independent woman, but I realize it doesn't make me happy. See, th this is an awakening of, a kind of the first stage of enlightenment. If you if you study Buddhist thought at all, uh, the first stage of enlightenment is the awareness that I'm not happy. Mm. Uh, now you're going to be motivated to do something about it. You know, a lot of the women who are very independent, they're all saying, oh, I'm so happy. <laughs> I don't need a man. I'm fine. Okay, go for a while. And then you wake up one day and it's too late to have a family. It's too late to have a relationship to some extent. Although I feel like at least when it comes to relationships, you can always make that change. You can't always have the baby because you get too old, you know, the clock ticks, you know, so, but it's such a, a, a precious thing. And a lot of women go, I don't want a child. I don't care about a child. And there's too many kids in the world anyway. I'm an environmentalist. No, we need more kids. The population's going down now in all the Western countries. We need more kids. That's one. And two is, yeah, it's expensive to have kids without a doubt. Uh, so you have to lower the standard of your life to experience what's really most important in life is the amount of love that you can feel when you have a family. And yet the ignorance that's going on now, which is the lack of enlightenment or awakening, 
is I'm happy without a family. I'm happy without a man. I can do it all myself and say, okay, go, go <laughs> do it yourself. And, and then you feel a little lonely. So you decide you're going to try a relationship. It's not going to work. It's not going to work because you're so on your male side. You don't know what you need as a woman, which is what women instinctively did in more previous generations, which is what they need is they need affection. They need understanding. They need to be heard. They want to share their feelings. They want you to help out. They want you to do things for them. And, uh, Basically, if you can't make a money, this is very interesting. As a woman, you're living in a more traditional setting where you're not making money, then you are dependent on the man for money. Now, if you're dependent on the man for money, then you make a huge amount of estrogen hormones. That's what produces estrogen is like if you go to a doctor and you need help and you trust them to give you help, your estrogen levels shoot up. And when your estrogen levels shoot up, if you're a woman, it lowers your stress level. So most of the benefit you actually get from going to a doctor, if you believe in that, is placebo. They've shown this, okay? Doctor can give you medicine to raise your blood pressure and tell you it's going to lower your blood pressure. It will lower your blood pressure. There's amazing studies on placebo. So, But I think a placebo also works best when you have belief. It's the whole idea. You believe this person's going to help you. And for women, they will... Uh, when they believe somebody can give me something I need, their estrogen levels will go up. And for women, that high estrogen will actually lower her stress. And ultimately, the source of all sickness is a chronic stress in our lives. You know, I was uh, just watching a, a talk of, I can't remember... Oh, I can't remember his name, but he's a medical doctor and he was affirming once again, he saw all these women who get cancer. Interesting, he was primarily saying women, uh, some men in it, but primarily women he had observed, when they got cancer, you would look at their their obituaries and you would see that, oh, she was always giving, you know, even when she had cancer, she continued giving to her clients and she kept going to the hospital and helping the poor. And they're, they're really giving, giving, giving. Uh, that's why there's the saying, the good die young. We, we say, oh, people who give a lot are so good, but they're also at the highest risk of cancer because particularly for women, when they're not secure in their female side, the way they deal with that insecurity is by being overgiving. Because if to be a secure in your feminine side means to you, you feel I can ask for help and get it. Okay, that's femininity. I can ask for help and get it. Now, historically, women didn't have to ask for help. They picked a man who already knew how to provide the help because what women needed was money, okay, protection. And so you pick the right man who you don't have to ask for more because they already are doing it. Your parents picked them out actually. And so you didn't have to learn how to ask, You, but you were put in a situation by culture that said you need help from men. And if you found a man who could provide help, then you were very happy. If you provided a man who uh, couldn't provide help because he didn't make enough money, he didn't have the skills, he didn't have the father to show him how to do it, whatever it might be. Uh, if he couldn't provide the help, then women would be very unhappy and they'd be stuck in a dysfunctional relationship and sometimes a violent relationship. Because when men feel powerless to make a woman happy, their stress levels go to extremely high levels and the worst side of men comes out, which can be violence. Uh, that's why we have more violent criminals are men because and you, I've taught in the prisons to violent criminals and none of them had love in their childhood. They were never had a happy mother. Okay, you can't find a criminal who had a happy mother, a, who was happy with her, with her, with her, with the father of the son. And we see this now in America where we have so much, 10 times more violence in the black community. And you look at, um, and there's still violence in the white community as well. We're the most violent country, but the 10 times more in the blacks on black. Uh, and what that's about is 70 to 80% of black boys in the last 20 years are growing up with no father at home. Now, what does that mean? If there's no father at home, that means you've got a mother who doesn't love a father. <laughs> you need to have a, a man who is being loved by your mother, or how can you ever let your mother's love in to be a man? So this is really, really a crisis. It's terrible. And 
uh, we've made sex casual. You see, it used to be one of these things culture used to do is, hey, guys, you can't have sex unless you marry a woman. So you got to have a job. You have to perform well. You got to earn her love. No, you, otherwise, you're just going to be alone. And so that was huge motivation for men. And they didn't have all the porn. And at least there used to be a lot of shame around masturbation. Now they've taken that away. And other, you know, the United Nations is uh, got a new sex education thing, even for elementary kids. You're telling them masturbation is a good thing. Uh, no, it's not a good thing. You're not a bad person if it happens occasionally. Actually, you know, when you have a teenage boy, that's when typically he'll start having erections. Uh, the mother or father needs to teach him not to do up and down, but just to go up on the top of the penis and it will become boring after a while and it'll go away. Uh, not to do this whole intensification thing. Otherwise, you're going to be a premature ejaculator when you grow up and you're not going to have the brain power that you can have. I was very fortunate to have been a celibate monk till I was 28 years old. So, you know, here I am with enormous brain power, a huge success. And I, I attribute it all to managing my sexual energy in a, in a spiritual way, spiritual meaning I only have sex with somebody I love, okay? If you have sex without love or just with yourself, you're just throwing away the life force energy. And some of the ancient traditions talk about it takes 30 days to recycle uh, another, the, the, the life force energy. It takes about 30 days for it to completely, for your body to produce the sperm, which is this, this creates life and you just throw it away. This is big stuff. So there used to be shame around that. And now today when kids feel ashamed when they do it, they still feel ashamed when they do it. They go, oh, that's just because society doesn't uh, uh, affirm it as a good thing. No, regardless whether society says it's a good thing, you're going to feel awful because you just wasted your life force. It's like if I have all this money in the bank and I waste it all afterwards, you kind of go, hey, it felt good, but I don't have any money in the bank <laughs> mm. without knowing anything. This is the energetics. This is also very important for a woman to continue feeling a man's attention, affection, and interest on an energetic level. What she has to know, you asked me to talk to women here, she has to know that what, what's going on now, a modern thing, which is particularly with single women who are not attractive to men. Why you don't have a man in your life or why you're not attracted to the men in your life is you don't have enough love energy. You see, you're too picky, too demanding, too judgmental. You have to increase your feminine energy, which is reflected in estrogen. And what happens when you, what happens when women, when women masturbate now, it used to be something that not women did that much, but now, oh, you got your vibrator and you, you go for the clitoris. Well, the clitoris doesn't stimulate a lot of estrogen. It stimulates more testosterone. And your problem is you already have too much testosterone. You've been making testosterone all day. And so it's kind of like the equivalent of a man masturbating for a woman to masturbate. Same thing. She loses her estrogen. She loses the radiance of her love, her happiness, which makes her uh, very attractive to a man, makes a man more interested in her, makes a man want to kneel to her and, and give her more. So what are the things, you asked me, things for women, and when many, many women are aware of this limitation that's happening in their life. They have a bit of awakening and enlightenment to realize, you know, I thought this was going to make me happy and it did in the beginning, but now I'm feeling lonely. I can't find a man and, or I'm in a marriage and there's no passion. There's no excitement. There's nothing. And, and she'll collect reasons. Okay. She's got all these reasons. Well, how can I be turned on to my husband? He just sits and watches TV or he ignores me or he, he I ask him to do stuff. He forgets to do it. He leaves his clothes on the floor. He's kind of, you know, how can I be turned on to that? Well, you're not turned on to that. <laughs> so what do you do? You, you, don't, you don't realize you're a part of the problem. The part of the problem is when you're feminine, you always feel I need help. That's the feminine side of you is I can't do it myself. I need help. And you have to then learn how to ask for it because the kind of help you're looking for is not the traditional help that men would provide. Men used to provide money and safety and security. That's no longer going to do much for women because they can do that themselves. I have one client, a woman who has, let, we'll just do an example here. She has $10 million. She's a great investor, whatever. Okay, marketing promoter, marries this man. He can make a half a million dollars a year. She's never satisfied. She feels he has greater potential. He's not living his potential. He should be making more. <laughs> He's not making enough. 
Uh, she won't use any of her money to support the family. <laughs> she's just sitting on her nest egg, but now she's dissatisfied with him. Just imagine women, it, for that woman, if she didn't have $10 million and she was didn't have a job or she didn't have a high paying job and her husband made half a million dollars, she'd be going, wow, this is great. You know, we're living on gravy here. This is fantastic. She would have love in her heart, but you have love in your heart when you have a need, a felt need, a felt need, and somebody provides for you. You can't have a feminine felt need if you're part, if you're on your male side, you have to be on your female side. And that's what it is, is to feel what you're felt what your need is and to be able to feel it. So all I can do is point you in the direction of it. It's like when people got sick with uh, COVID or whatever, most of the people were old and they were vitamin D deficient. You can just see if you're vitamin D deficient, you're going to get sick faster. It's just with any sickness, that's a big, a big thing. So those people didn't know that what they needed is more sunshine. Instead, they stayed inside <laughs> they didn't go out and get sunbathed, get some vitamin D in your body to fight off any infection that you have. Uh, so that's because they didn't know what they needed. People don't know what they need. Now I give lots of nutritional advice to people. I've been doing it for 25 years. What was it? When I turned 50, I remember I had, I had early stage Parkinson's wow. and having early stage part. Yeah. Yeah. I was doing the whole shaking thing, whatever. I'm a researcher. So if I went to my doctor, my doctor wants to give me a medicine that will actually cause you to eventually gets worse and worse. It's inevitable. Once you start taking the medicine for Parkinson's, it will only get worse and worse and worse. That's a given. It's a death sentence. I have relatives and that happened to them. I said, well, I'm not going that way. So I'm going to study what caused the problem and how to solve the problem. And I did. I So I got all into studying uh, health and natural health supplements without depending on drugs. Uh, you know, if I was in a car accident, thank God for the doctors. But you know, there's yeah. this whole this whole uh, medical thing of you've got this symptom, let me give you a drug. They've got this symptom, let me give you a drug. W wait a second, how am I creating that problem? Now I was just mentioning that this one doctor, Gabor, Gabor is his name, mm -hmm. and okay, he's got his own medical thing where he analyzed the personalities of people who got cancer, and they were all over givers. And mostly women. Okay. They're not that a man can't get it because a man can also be an overgiver. But for the so much of the women, we're all completely into giving to other people all the time. And that's a quote, a good thing. It is a good thing if you're also happy. You shouldn't give and then feel empty as a result. You should overflow in your giving. That's for women. Now, again, one of the things is for women is you produce estrogen when you're receiving you produce testosterone when you're successful giving. Okay, so somebody in, in need of help and I go and solve the problem, testosterone goes up. A woman goes and helps somebody, testosterone goes up. Does estrogen go up? No. Giving doesn't produce estrogen unless it's your child. If it's your child, what's happening is a, a, a child, a little person needs you so much that when you give to them, they give you so much unconditional love. So it's a different kind of love. It's unconditional love from a child. So she, when she, we all need unconditional love. So when the baby gives her unconditional love, her estrogen goes up and then she can freely give. So giving is a good thing if you have something to give. If, you're, if I have no money in my bank and I borrow money to give to other people, one thing I used to do as an overgiver, <laughs> somebody needs a lot of help. I say, well, I have good income. So I'll just borrow money for them and, and then loan it to them. And then they don't pay me back. And then I'm left with, oh, not only did I lose money, but I'm in debt money. You know, this is this craziness the generous heart does. We have to realize that for women, when their self-esteem is low, they tend to be overgivers. They feel, I don't deserve to just receive. I'm just going to give. And so what we have is all these women bumping up their self-esteem by look what I can do, look what I do, but never being able to relax. So mm. to relax, relaxation, ease, comfort, flow. These are all the qualities of the female side, enjoying, pacing, not rushing. Now it's not, doesn't mean you can't have a male side if you're a woman. I mean, I know some women listening, they like to drive their car fast, ride their horse fast. They like to get in the midst of solving the problem. Not all women, certainly, but some do. That's your male side. That's your personality. Nothing wrong with that. But biologically, that means you have to have greater enlightenment, greater awareness to realize if I'm now stressed, 
it's because I'm not tending to the garden of my female side. I've got to water those plants of my female side. And for women who are more masculine, just by nature, maybe they got more love from their father or their mother became like a man, so they don't really know how to be feminine. Uh, this is what I see in Russia. Uh, the women just don't know anything how to be a female. They they know how to look good feminine. Now, I'm just making a generalization of the people who came to my workshop, just put it that way. But uh, what you found is the women are tough and they're strong and why, why, why? They're just not vulnerable and sensitive, delicate, opening, loving and all that way. Not that they're bad people, uh, but they didn't have a role model of a mother who was dependent on a man because in the last century, I think it's over 60 million Russian men were killed in the wars. So when you have 60 million Russian men being killed, <laughs> And ironically, we call men the privileged ones, right? Yeah. <laughs> 60 million men killed, all right? Uh, oh, we're so privileged. Mm. Uh, and particularly white. <laughs> They're all white. Yeah, okay, yeah. the biggest amount of people die, you know, you, we're not talking 7 million Jews. We're talking 70 million Russian men dying. Mm. So this is a huge atrocity, just... To, Terrible, 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 terrible. But the problem with that is it, it leaves a scar. The scar is here's all these women now having to raise their children on their own. And so what you get is boys growing up without mothers who are full of love for men, who feel I can trust a man, I appreciate a man, I accept a man the way he is. These are the qualities of femininity that you can culture in a relationship. And it's, it's hard to culture it in any other relationship. So each relationship, like relationship with your children, cultures are unconditional love. Relationship with our work conditions us to be more balanced between our male and female side. If we have a home life that supports our female side, we can go to our male side and the workplace. Uh, and But the romantic relationship is the most powerful in order to stimulate in a woman huge amounts of estrogen. No other relationship will do it. And if she's a gay woman, she'll never get as much as if she was with a man. Okay, they only have a certain amount they can get with each other. <laughs> and But when you, when you have a, a heterosexual relationship, what you have is one partner can be very much on their masculine side and connected to the female, and the other female can be on her female side and through romance. And when you have that romance, you have more masculine on one side, feminine on the other. It's like a magnetic polarity. He's a positive pole. She's a negative pole, meaning he's inserting and she's receptive. So when you have the masculine and feminine together, you know, they're like any friendship. They're kind, you know, they're, it, we're not talking the first stages of relationship. There's all this romantic stuff, but it settles down after a while. But then when you get, we lie in bed together and you get close like two magnets, when they get really close, they click really hard. And he gets hard and she opens up. <laughs> you know, it's that that magic. So when I talk about sustaining, I mean, last night I had sex three times, okay, because my wife was just so grateful for something I did for her. And she kept expressing it. <laughs> she felt so lucky to be married to me. So, hey, what was to say that, you know, just brings your testosterone up as well as your estrogen. So you have the power and the potency to do it. You want to do it. It's not like a routine thing, whatever. It's like like you felt in the beginning, but it's not exactly. The feeling you have in the beginning, I don't want to be unrealistic for people. The feeling you have in the beginning is basically any time of the day, you just touch and psh, there's electricity and, and you're kind of like crazy. <laughs> you have... Uh, a word came to me today, so I want to say it. There was a, hopefully it makes sense because I just had the thought. But when you go to a movie, uh, you go in with a, now I can't remember the word for it, but it, it's a, 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 a you're going to, you prepare yourself to disbelieve. Nothing is real, but you prepare yourself to feel that it's real. I forget the phrase for that. I'm a little embarrassed that I, but I was just thinking about it today, but it's a really good one. The idea is we do it when we're driving the car. We go into, we choose to disbelieve the danger of, when you're in a car, you can die at any moment, mm. okay? One of the most dangerous things you can do is go in a car. Uh, people are dying all the time. Uh, somebody runs a red light and you're dead, okay? You didn't do anything. You're powerless on one level, just other people's. You know, you're driving along and you just trust somebody's not going to come into your lane and hit you. 
So we suspend our disbelief, okay? We suspend our mistrust, okay? We just have to to survive, so we suspend it. Well, what happens automatically, and when you go to the movies, you 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 dispend your disbelief. You go, this is not even possible. Nobody, but you say, hey, I'm watching a movie, so I, dis, I, I suspend my disbelief. And we all can relate to that if you just think about it for a moment. Mm. Well, now, when you fall in love with someone, the testosterone goes so high in men and the estrogen goes so high in women that we suspend our disbelief. You see, we go into just thinking everything is wonderful. Well, and we don't see the problems. We don't see potential problems. Then as the, as the testosterone, estrogen kind of come back to normal, good levels, we start seeing the problems are there and things that were cute in the beginning are kind of annoying and you get bothered by something. So these are normal kind of things. But if a man is doing things in his life to raise testosterone and a woman is doing things to raise estrogen that are not dependent on newness, See, the newness produces the dopamine. I don't need a new partner. I can't be the same partner over and over. It doesn't, it's, it's the masculinity going to the femininity. And what femininity looks like, those are the questions you asked, and we can do other questions now, but the femininity looks like a woman who can ask for help and get it, can say on a regular basis, this is going to be shocking, say to her husband, one of my favorite techniques I suggest for women to come back to their female side is to say to their partner, Every day, everyone get cuddling up in bed. You say, do you love me? And he says, yes, I love you. And then she says, how much do you love me? And he said, with all my heart, are you happy to be married to me? Or do you think I'm still, you still think I'm beautiful? See, women all have these insecurities. This is a reality. They have insecurity. Every man has insecurity, whether we're aware of them or not. Those insecurities are there, but particularly for women to express an insecurity to reveal, see, is to get naked. If you get naked, it turns men on. Okay, you want to turn your husband on? You want to get that guy moving? You want to get him energetic? You want him to be doing the things he did in the beginning? You're not vulnerable. It doesn't, it doesn't exist. If a woman could be on her female side, she will bring out the best in a man. Now, certainly some cases, you know, he's not doing what he needs to at least have testosterone. Okay, so I'm not putting it all on the woman. But if he's got a good job, he's not addicted <laughs> and you're not feeling anything, hey, wake up. You need to connect with your female side. And if you're not happy, period, you're not connecting to your female side because your female side is a part of us that is joyful. So I'm joyful talking to you. You're joyful listening to me. That is your female side, but you're also focused and learning stuff and applying things. That's your male side. This is where you know, when you can have both sides together, that's where you're in flow state. That's where you're in your timeless state. That's when things come out of you. That's where creativity comes from. That's where your best side comes from. That's how you express more of your inner potential is when your masculine and your feminine is in balance. And culture, you, the old culture, which allowed women to have time to be with their children and live in a safe neighborhood and you know, the thing about Australia, which I always had enjoyed coming to Australia. If anybody wants to promote me in coming to Australia again, please contact my office because the people love me there. I had, one of my talks, I had 7,000 people in some arena. Wow. It was amazing. Yeah. Uh, then, then what happened is uh, uh, other things happened. I haven't been back in quite a while. But when I first started, my first big trip to teach, to promote Men Are From Mars was uh, to Australia. And people said, oh, you, you must be worried that they're not going to be open to these ideas. I said, no, they'll be the most open. Men, it was a culture that knew men were men and women were women. Now, I know that's that's starting to change even in Australia, okay? Mm -hmm. But around the world, it's so, like in America, it had already started changing. Because see, there's a there's a ignorant agenda, thinking the world would be a better place if we're all the same, Okay. <laughs> But we're not all the same, okay? So you have to look at, the emperor has no clothes. You have to realize we are different. And when we are unhappy, we think the problem is always outside of us. And that's ignorance. You know, it, it, today I'm talking a little bit about what Buddha taught. You know, Buddha basically he said the first stage of enlightenment is to realize, okay, I'm suffering. That's what women can realize now. Hey, I'm not happy being a man all the time. First, you got to wake up to that. Then you have to realize, do I blame somebody else? No, that's the second great teaching of Buddha, which is recognize your suffering and then realize who's causing it. <laughs> you, <laughs> we cause all of our suffering. And then you have relief from suffering. 
by realizing you can change your behavior, you can change your thoughts, you can change how you feel. All these things can be changed if you realize I'm doing it. And then once you realize I'm doing it, then you're free from that particular suffering and you'll get a new one. <laughs> Life is a process of, of going up and up and up. But each time you go up, your marriage gets better, your life gets better, your success is better. Uh, you know, it's always an up and down, up and down road. Uh, ironically, people don't realize, they think, oh, you know, John wrote this great book and sold to 50 million people, maybe 100 million now, but the must have been so easy for him. Well, for the first 10 years, I and actually, even since, I've never received a positive print interview. Wow. Okay, if you look at the New York Times, uh, USA Today, Time Magazine, uh, Newsweek, Forbes, everybody condemned me. You know, they basically said, I'm a sexist. I'm no good. I'm this and that. Don't waste your money. He's he's a fraud. Uh, this is OK. Good. You guys can think that continue to be unhappy. I've got millions of people who read my books they have better relationships now. That's all I care about. Mm. So it, it's you can't expect everybody to love and accept you. That's you know, that's part of life is learning how to move forward by following your heart. But the point I'm making here is. There's always the up and down because it wasn't like I just went through all of that without feeling knocked over many times. I was knocked down many, many times, felt like giving up and it's too hard. And, you know, you have to pick yourself back up and find forgiveness. That's the whole message is find forgiveness and find love. And I think in my own career, uh, and I'm saying this for some people who are single, thinking that being single is going to help your career. You know, when life knocks you down in your career, uh, it's it's easy to just kick people out of your life, okay? So that's an easy thing. Well, I just won't listen to those people. Well, I don't care about that person. I don't care about that person. But what if your husband or your wife and you're living with them, you can't be there and go, I don't care, okay? You have to open your heart again. If you're a woman, you can't just be living with a man going, I just can't trust him. That's the reaction women have. They go into, I don't trust. Men go into the reaction of, I don't care. Again, a gender difference uh, that... Women don't realize that when they're mistrusting a man, it's like taking out a machine gun and shooting him to bits in the same way that if a man goes into an uncaring attitude, uh, you know, F you and something like that, that's a, a mean, uncaring. It just it's like taking a machine gun out and breaking her heart. Uh, we have these vulnerabilities. We don't realize it. You know, if men understood that when you get mad and say profanities, you just shut your wife down. And women don't realize when they go, how could you do that? You don't love me. You don't care about me. <laughs> just like shut him down. Just, you know, disapprove of him and judge him and push him away. So femininity is not disapproving, although, and it's not complaining. This is the irony. A complaint only shuts a man down. Whereas a request in the realm that he can actually solve and do for you uh, only brings a man up. So it's learning to start analyzing your complaints and it, whether, whether you're saying them out loud or thinking them, it has the same effect on him. As a matter of fact, just the eye, the eye contact and the tone of voice when you have a complaint inside, it's going to knock his testosterone down more than if you even said it. Because wow. at least if you say it, he can defend himself, you know, say, so, well, that's wrong, you know, that's, but what you feel inside if you stay apart, then it doesn't affect him, but you don't want to stay apart. The whole point of it is you want to be close and be intimate and, and we energize each other. You know, a woman's the, the love that a man needs from a woman. And this is for everybody. Basically, if we look at hormones, remember we look at men, we say we need 10 times, men need 10 times more testosterone than women, 20 times more to be in love. Okay. With a woman. And, and a monogamous relationship. And again, everybody wants to talk about polyamorous and having other partners. Why do you need other partners? <laughs> it's only because you're not satisfied with your partner. You don't know how to love one person. See, this is, and it's only, for a man, it's only high testosterone that gives you commitment and dedication and focus. And if you have that commitment, dedication, and focus, it goes a long way to helping a woman feel, I can depend on you. I, I, you're there for me because I'm going to get old. I'm not going to be as beautiful. I'm not going to be, I have, we have problems sometimes, you know, she needs to feel that he is thick and thin. He's in there and he can't be in there if he doesn't have strong testosterone because see what strong testosterone does, it helps you solve the problem. 
It allows you to detach from emotions and solve the problem. I'm responsible for everything in my life. Look at any successful man. He doesn't whine and complain. <laughs> he may feel it sometimes, and then he will let it go. He's not going to go to somebody else and whine and complain. That's why you have good traditional ideas that men don't whine and complain. Uh, when don't express negative emotion. Little boys can, okay? Little boys are different from men who are from age puberty on. A change happens in our brain and body. It's dramatic, it's programmed in there, but the change that happens is our testosterone goes up 10 times. Just that's what puberty is. Suddenly we become masculine. And what masculine genes do is they override feminine genes. That's the point of them. Nature made it so that we have 23 genes that are different. We have all female genes, okay? But we have 23 genes that women don't have. And those, the function of those genes is to make testosterone and override many of the feminine genes in our body. If you don't override those feminine genes, then you will have too much estrogen and you will be angry. You will have more fight or flight. You'll have more stress hormones. You'll be more unhappy. You'll be more demanding. You'll be more picky. You're more vulnerable to addiction. You lose motivation. That's what happens to men when they don't have those, uh, when, the, when the masculine genes are not being expressed. So I, I like to put in a little commercial here for a moment, uh, which is it's taken me, you know, I mentioned that over 20 years ago, I had early stage Parkinson. I solved the problem. A big part of solving that problem was researching what the brain needs to heal itself. And it's the same thing. If you are a man and you're producing too much estrogen, it's your, you have what's called genes. And the genes are in what's called the genome. Now, the genome, if you get, if let's say you get angry a lot, your genome in three months will cause you to become angry more and more. It will produce the expression of too much estrogen in your body. And for women, if you're doing a job that requires testosterone, just in three months, your genome is gonna become express more masculine hormones, and then it's gonna duplicate itself that way. So now you become like a man, okay? <laughs> your female genes are gonna be suppressed and you're gonna disconnect from your female genes. So that actually becomes programming. Your programming is not just mental. It goes into every cell of your body. There's a genome in it. This is microscopic. And it's recent research has shown, and, and I've been promoting this substance that's called oratic acid, orotate. And orotate is the only substance known that will actually go into the gene and help the gene self-correct according to your natural blueprint. So this is the help. This is the... It's like a blessing because what's happening is people are having their genes changed right now. There's more research showing that some injections are actually have genetic material in them that can cause your genes to change. And this is really bad. Or you're a child, let's say you're a little boy and you have no role model of a father, your, your, your male genes turn off and your female genes override your male genes. So you don't have that ability and after three months of that trauma of not having that masculine support, that literally the gene changes because they will duplicate. They will duplicate and duplicate and duplicate. So you're stuck for the rest of your life being a little boy, feeling like a little girl or a girl feeling like a boy. That can be corrected. Now, I, you know, we have such a problem with that today. We don't have a lot of research on correcting it and so forth. There's not a lot of research done on it. But what my experience is, is when you have a boy who's too much on his female side, or even a man who's too much on his female side, you need to get the women away from him. Okay, get the women away from him. So if you're a woman and your husband's all needy and emotional, you need to get away from him and go do things that make you feel feminine. Okay, and for example, don't worry about him. Uh, a lot of, I just counseled a woman today. She was saying, well, you know, my husband ignores me, neglects me, but you know, he's sitting there, he's feeling bad. I feel sorry for him. No, feel sorry for yourself and stop being so negative about him and then feeling sorry for him. Give me a break. It's like you got the machine gun on and you're going, and I feel sorry for him. That's just this mothering feeling. You should not mother your husband, <laughs> period. You don't mother a man. His mother will do that. Your job is to be his lover. You're the one who depends on him, to him to be your hero, your provider, your protector, your nurturer, which is a whole new word for men, is to learn how to nurture your wife's feelings by listening. So this was, again, the, the hard thing. If a woman doesn't know, I have a problem, and 
And it's not all my husband, but I have a problem. I need to become more feminine to bring out the best of him. He needs to become more masculine to make it safe for me to open up. But it's so easy. This is why I'm a man. I know how to open, get a man to do this. You just say to a man, look, honey, you do such a great job. You do so many wonderful things for me. And I'm out there working too. And I get kind of stressed out. And I just want to feel close to you. Because when I feel close to you, I feel so much better. See, that statement has no blame in it. I feel so much better. And here's something that would help me feel better. And sometimes I just want to tell you all my problems for 10 minutes and how I feel sometimes during my stressful day. Today, I was frustrated because and tell a little story and or I was so disappointed and tell a little story. And, you know, at work, I'm concerned or the kids going to this school. I'm really concerned because they're teaching them to masturbate. We maybe need to find another school. <laughs> I'm concerned, you know, as a. Uh, we're seeing all the side effects of taking certain injections. I'm concerned about taking another one. What do you think? <laughs> you know, these are big things. You know, just watch the news and you have concerns and worries. So I just want to take 10 minutes. I want to express my feelings because when you talk about what you feel inside, particularly negative feelings, when you talk about negative feelings inside, a lot of estrogen gets produced and then your negative feelings go away because the negative feelings are only the production are produced because your estrogen levels are low and they're not up. So this is so interesting. So for 10, this is going to be like interesting for him. You just, I just need to talk for five or 10 minutes and I don't need you to say anything. As a matter of fact, it doesn't help if you say anything, just listen. And occasionally if you're inclined, you could say, help me understand that better in a friendly tone or ask me, tell me more or what else, because the more words I get out, the more estrogen goes up, and then suddenly I feel really good, and I'll go in a hug, give you a hug, and thank you so much. This is a miracle. Any man will do that. There's not a man on this planet that won't do that. It's such a simple thing. You mean I'm going to spend five or 10 minutes and say nothing and do nothing, and I'm going to get rewarded for it? Might make my wife happy? Of course I'll do that. But the problem is women say, no, no, he doesn't listen at all. That's because when you talk about your complaints or your negative emotions, you're putting them on him. He's the good guy. Okay, don't, don't, don't say anything about, I feel neglected in our relationship or you've changed or why do you did this? Or I've asked you so many times to do this. You don't do this. Leave all that stuff out. Okay, that just makes it worse. Share your feelings. Estrogen levels go up. Then what you find is you have a husband who's more attentive and interested in you. That's one thing. Two, another great skill for women, learn how to ask for help. Well, what help do you need? Well, one thing is I need help to get back to my female side. So when he's busy watching TV or busy doing some project and, you know, you don't want to, you, you can sense he doesn't want to be interrupted. You just say to him, you say, oh, honey, when you get a chance, I know you're really busy with that. Or I know you're really tired. You work so hard, something complimentary, something nice. He says, I know you have that. And when you get a chance, would you help me? It'll only take 10 minutes. Uh, and in the beginning, for some men, you might have to say, would you help me? It'll take five minutes, okay? It's a little thing. But the reality is a little thing can raise estrogen. Just the fact that you can ask and get will raise your estrogen. Now, certainly, if you just offered the help and you didn't have to ask, yet you're like a child. You want to be a child and have people do things for you without having to ask? See, growing up, women, is learning how to ask what you want. You do that as a businesswoman, don't you? Nobody's going to do it for you. You ask. In a relationship, you want to be a baby, you're not going to have a successful relationship. You have to learn how to ask. Why did you not know how to ask in the past? Why did people didn't? Because women didn't need to ask because their husbands basically were already doing what they're supposed to do because it was make money, provide help. You don't need to talk. You don't need to have relationship. You don't need romantic skills. We didn't need any of that stuff. Women were happy because they got fed. OK, and they got the support they needed to feel safe and secure where they could raise their children. They could have a family and they sort of ran the whole thing. They had plenty of time to cook and clean and hire people, whatever was necessary, because he's a good provider. My goodness, we just can't have that today. We don't have that today. I think the big one of the biggest holdouts on the planet was Australia, where, you know, there was a promise that everybody could have their own farm. Now what you have to know is the evil people are trying to get rid of all the farms and they mm. want to feed you bugs mm -hmm. and they want to get rid of all farming under the, uh, like it's affecting global warming or something. <laughs> it's just like nonsense, cow farts. Uh, and how about breathing next? You know, we're breathing out carbon dioxide. No breathing anymore. Okay, so I know that upsets some people to hear that. 
But <clears throat> God's in charge of the weather. And yes, we can clean the air. We can clean the water. I'm all for that. I'm an environmentalist. We can protect the species. The world's not going to end in 10 years. <laughs> None of the predictions have ever come true. Uh, we were already supposed to be underwater right now in America in certain parts. No, it didn't happen. All the productions, projections have been wrong. If you go back 30 years, they were predicting global freezing. And now they're saying more people are dying from the heat wave. Well, that was because of a big volcano, but 10 times more people die every year from cold. So this is not a big, terrible thing. Uh, relax. And what we do in our relationships, what we do in the world is... is Pain, cells, danger, the next emergency, emergency. We're all hyped up. Relax. But women can't relax unless they can talk about the emergency. <laughs> and if men could just listen and help raise their estrogen, that's one. Two, another skill women can do is, uh, well, first of all, let me just throw this in because I'm looking at this. This is finally after 10 years. Uh, well, I promoted this product, the ingredients, many of the ingredients in here, they help me with my Parkinson's. It just helps the brain. Erratic acid is a substance that goes, this is recent research. I didn't even know this research when I was promoting it for 20 years ago, is this uh, erratic acid, it's concentrated in mother's milk, first of all. Where does it come from? Okay, where it builds the brain. They've proven that if you put erratic acid in a, a Petri dish with brain cells, they'll multiply. Nothing else will multiply brain cells. So I've got to, you know, my brain is growing, you know, as opposed to shrinking. Most people's brains shrink. Mine is growing because I've been doing this substance called erratic acid orotate uh, every day, almost every day. And I'm not perfect at everything, <laughs> but it's my regular go-to. I take other supplements, but what I did is I combined it with other substances. So erratic acid combined with uh, lithium, for example, lithium was something they gave to bipolar people. Well, we live in a bipolar society. Everything's an emergency. We crash down, we go up, we go down. All lithium does is balance brain chemicals and hormones, balanced hormones, lithium. What it did for bipolar people, and it, it helped, but it had terrible side effects because they were using a toxic form of lithium. They had lithium carbonate and they gave people toxic doses, which is 500 times the dose that's in here. When you bind lithium to erratic acid, it crosses the blood brain barrier and helps to restore balance in the brain. Now we know that not only does it restore balance in the brain, but it also goes into your genes. Nothing has proven to do this except injections of some foreign gene. No, this is a substance that allows your genes to basically uh, correct any errors, but it's based upon stimulation from the environment. Okay, so the environment is telling me to be, I'm a man, the environment is telling me to be a woman, treat me like a, a little baby girl. Uh, <laughs> talk about my feelings, uh, whine and complain, listen to me. Okay, then what's going to happen is my female genes are going to get expressed. My male genes will be suppressed. And that's now after three months, that, that gene gets duplicated and duplicated the rest of your life. And so you start to just become more too feminine. So what you have to do is you get the erratic acid on a regular basis and you do things that will now stimulate testosterone. You have to use willpower for that. Same thing for women. They have to take the erratic acid and then they do things from willpower, not because they feel like sharing their feelings. Uh, they have to learn how to ask their partner to do things for them, not because they feel good doing it. It's uncomfortable to do something new. Nobody likes to change, but you have to use willpower to do this. And people go, well, it doesn't feel natural for me to do this. Well, yeah, you know, it doesn't, it, it, it uh, doesn't feel natural for me to stop eating a gallon of ice cream. <laughs> Bad things always feel good, okay? <laughs> and good things, if you're used to bad things feeling good, good things feel bad, okay? It takes willpower to do. You know, if you're a more sedentary person and you say, hey, go to the gym, that does not feel good, but you do it with willpower because you know you need it. Well, what we need, if we want to change the programming of our genome, find this substance, get this erratic acid or a tape. It's not an acid. It's, it's one aspect. It binds with minerals and becomes a salt. You take lithium orotate, you take calcium orotate, build your bones, you build 
uh, magnesium orotate, which is going to help relax the whole system and turn on the genes of relaxation in your body. The, you, you bind the minerals to oratic acid and you get all these extra benefits of oratic acid. Then you combine it with, and this is what the most recent, recent version, which is called the elemental orotates. What I put in there is to bind it with also brain stimulants that will help lower your stress so your body can re, the, the, so that the genes can repair themselves more efficiently. And so what I have in there is every single stress-reducing, proven stress-reducing ingredient. One that most people are familiar with today is ashwagandha. Have you heard of ashwagandha? Yeah, yeah. It's very, very popular now. It's one of the main mm. adaptogens in here. And that's more for the relaxation, mood, and so forth. Then I have something called rhodiola rosea, which was discovered the Russians were using it. They still use it you know, all for focus and intelligence. Uh, that rhodiola rosea is in there. Uh, they found that rhodiola, the people that were living to 100 years in the Caucasian mountains, every day they drank rhodiola tea. Uh, and that was really good for the brain function. The oratic acid actually has proven to cause brain cells to duplicate and replicate. But it's hard for oratic acid to do its job uh, because you need to lower the stress as well. So I put all these stress reducers so it's even more effective than the product I've been promoting for the last um, 20 years, you'll go online, you see lots of videos where I talk about lithium orotate because it is the most important. Lithium is a, a element that will balance the dopamine serotonin, which then balances the adrenal function to balance the uh, testosterone and estrogen. So this is not like something that it's already going to make things better for you. But if you really want the real change to take place, you have to change your behavior, which means women have to practice asking for help. They have to practice sharing their feelings. Men have to have practice not sharing your feelings, listening. You can always share positive feelings. When a man has positive feelings, that means his estrogen is high, but his testosterone is higher. When a man has negative feelings, it means his estrogen is high and his testosterone is lower. Do you see the point? Mm, I feel weak mm. as a man, but I have all this emotion. So yeah, I love you. I want to complain to you. I hurt by you. Or, you know, you know, this is just nonsense that we're just we're seeing in the movies now, this is all programming of backwards, up is down, down is up. <laughs> you know? yeah. Yeah. These feminine yeah. men, these masculine women, the women yeah. are running everything. Men are like, I don't know what to do. And I'm scared. You know, this is, we don't want to promote this. And, and first of all, kids are getting this in the environment. They're getting it at school. They're being taught there's no differences. It's, oh, so we have to change the program and give our children a different experience. If you've got a feminized boy, what you need to do is you need to spend more time with his father when the mother's not there. He needs to do more competitive activities. He needs to do activities where he can excel at within the range of what he can do. Uh, you know, my mother very wisely, because there's another thing about uh, children who are number five tend to be uh, more on their female side. 80% uh, of gay men, for example, are the fifth child, according to someone's study. Uh, if you're the fifth child, uh, there's a, a, a greater vulnerability because you're going to be neglected, you know, basically, you know, everybody's already gone through the learning curve and you're sort of out there on the side. We don't know why that is, but because I'm the fifth child, uh, I was definitely more on my sensitive side, and which has benefits. I'm very emotional. I'm very uh, empathetic and so forth, but I learned to manage it as a man. Uh, and so what my mother did is she brought me to boxing. She brought me to wrestling. She brought me to karate. I, became, I was in the front of karate magazines at 12, 12 years old. You know, she, she got me maybe a little, helped me be a little entrepreneur. I got a paper route when I was 13, you know, to learn money and so forth. And she wanted me to be around a real beer drinking man, you know, because my dad was traveling a lot. He was just not always there. So she replaced that masculine energy by putting me in the hands of other men uh, who were not all sensitive and, and more on their female side. That's all you have to do. If, you look, at ancient, if you look at the ancient traditions, I was just in Africa and with the, I forget the ones that jump up and down with sticks, uh, they, they, we went and they taught, told us about their rituals and what they do and so forth. The boy stays with the mother until puberty. And when puberty hits, the men all come and steal the boy away from the mother. 
the mother knows this is going to happen, but the mother, oh, don't take my child, don't take my child. That way the child doesn't feel betrayed by the mother. But then the boy is taken away from the mother and now sleeps with the men. And he learns to do male things and he has to do tough things. You know, you've got the American Indians where they have the uh, uh, vision quest. You know, you go, <laughs> you go out seven days, you know, you have no food, nothing, you know. <laughs> So I remember once mm. meeting some Indians and deciding I'm already an adult. I'm going to go on a vision quest. And they said, you go out here and you have no food and no water for seven days. And it was really hot. And I, one day I'm back. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not game for that. So yeah. I don't think we have to do things as severe as in the past. Mm. But, mm. you know, for me, I, I, you know, had my mother basically put me in the hands of situations which were challenging and difficult and competitive mm. and made me perform, but in a context where I could be successful. That was the key. You want to create a context for a child to be successful. Awesome. So I'm speaking to this whole feminization of boys, which is happening today. If we take some good erratic acid with a lot of uh, supplements, you know, there's other ones in here that, you know, I, berberin is one for blood sugar. Most people, when they're hormonally imbalanced, they eat a lot of sugar and berberin will help balance the blood sugar, a lot of have stable mood, a lot of mood enhancing supplements in here. So this is, uh, you can get it at Amazon. If you just go under uh, Mars Venus supplements, this little guy will come up under Mars Venus supplements. And you can read all of the description. I just touched on it. But this is, I think everybody can benefit this because we're living in a world where there's so much stress. These are proven stress reducers. Also, we're living in a world where we're out of balance, it's like high blood pressure, low pressure. That's an imbalance. See, balancing is really important, but in relationships, the most important balance is men that keep coming back to their masculine, women coming back to their feminine, and we can have relationship skills to do this, but we have resistance to finding balance because our genome is already programmed for women to be more masculine, men to be more feminine. So we wanna change the genetic structure. We wanna allow the genes themselves to self-correct. And this is, I'm excited about this because now we have research showing that erratic acid actually goes into the genome, nothing else does, and it will help the genome to self-correct based upon the environment you put yourself in. Powerful, powerful. Again, you know, John, you know, it's always an honor to have you on the show um, and the wisdom and the value that you drop. Um, again, you know, thanks. Thanks again for your time. Um, and I'll have in the show notes links to your product because uh, it looks very fascinating and something that I think everyone needs to get around. And, Anyone that's listening to this episode, if you haven't reached out and purchased, you know, men are from Mars, women are from Venus, or the latest version, the updated version, uh, beyond Mars and Venus, I highly recommend getting it. Um, I, I come across a lot of clients and friends in that and and tell them to check out the past episode. And they're like, the first thing I say is, have you heard of Dr. John Gray? Men are from Mars, women are from Venus. Yep heard of him but i've actually haven't gone and read the book so i encourage everyone you know to check it out because it is a game changer and can make a difference in your life in your love life and all the lives around you that's great also lots of beautiful done video blogs that are free and a free class at marsvenus.com i'll just mention that as well Awesome yeah. stuff. Again, thanks, John. Thanks again for listening to or watching another episode of Unlocked From Within. Please like and share the episode with anyone you think it may help. Please leave a comment on what key insights you got from the episode. And please also comment some questions you'd like me to ask in the future. And also comment on who else you'd love to have on the show to be interviewed. If you'd love to know more about Dr. John Gray, check him out at marsvenus.com. He's also across all the social media platforms and has a lot of free content on YouTube. If you want to read the classic Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus, you can check it out on Amazon, or you could also get the updated version, which is Beyond Mars and Venus, which is also on Amazon, which I both highly recommend checking out. If you want to learn more about Dr. John Gray's lithium Ortate tablets, you can check it out on amazon.com. If you'd love to get in touch with me to be on the show, speaking events, 
corporate events, workshops, or experience a one-on-one -on -one Unlocked From Within session to clear and remove any limiting beliefs or any trauma or subconscious blockages, please reach out to me at martyclay.com. Again, thanks for listening.